Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. We recently had a serious shakeup in the modern ban list, like serious shakeup. Sort of the meek is on the prowl again. As soon as it was unbanned, players everywhere began brewing. Well, today I'm here to talk to you about one of the sweet Sword of the Meek decks that have been created so far. Sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy one of the coolest decks to exist in a long time. This is going to be fun. If you enjoy our modern deck techs and want more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button. It helps out a lot. Normally we start off with the lands and then move our way up the curve. Not going to do that this time. At its heart, Thopter Gifts is a combo control deck. Attrition is the name of the game, so we might as well start with the namesake combo. We're running 4 Thopter Foundry and 3 Sword of the Meek. This is the cornerstone of the deck and everything you do is designed around getting this annoying combo into play. Here's how it works. Simply get the sword into play, then get the foundry into play. You sacrifice the sword to the foundry, it hits the graveyard as part of the cost. You create your new 1-1 Thopter token, the sword triggers from the graveyard, and it comes back equipped on the 1-1. You can then sacrifice it again, get another 1-1, and it comes back again, effectively creating a loop where for 1 mana, you can gain 1 life and get a 1-1 flying Thopter token. This is like the pinnacle of a control combo. If you enjoy this combo, you'll love the rest of the deck. Some things you probably already noticed. This isn't a blowout combo. It isn't a combo that wins the turn it comes down. It isn't flashy like that. What it does do, it gives you inevitability. Once you get the combo on lock, it's really hard to disrupt effectively, especially since you have multiple copies of each piece. Again, control combo. You take control of the game and then push your opponent out with this stupidly valuable tempo play. Not fun enough? No problem. We also included a pair of time sieve in the deck. Oh yeah, we're going deep. All you need is 5 mana, and the combo assembled, and bam, infinite turns. Create 5 little thopters, sacrifice them all, take a turn. Create 5 more, sacrifice them, take a turn. There's probably a more optimal way to build this deck, but wow, Time Civ is one of the most fun cards out there and we had to put it in. Let's get to the rest of the deck now that you know what we're trying to do here. We have a lot of the cards you'd expect out of a blue-white control shell. We're running 3 Serum Visions, 2 Spell Snare, 4 Path to Exile, and 1 Cryptic Command. Card draw, counter magic, and removal are good no matter what you're playing. No reason not to play them here. Ancestral Vision is unbanned in modern, true. But in testing, we really didn't want it. It's more effective to see the cards I want now or use some filtering to get where we need to be. Vision oftentimes either drop too late or honestly, three cards just weren't enough without some kind of filtering. Just it wasn't worth playing is where I'm going with this. Now we need ways to assemble our combo if we don't draw it naturally. We did include a bunch of copies of each of the cards to optimize our chances of drawing them, but sometimes they need a little help. Muddle the Mixture may be the single best card in the entire deck. Either it's a 2 mana counter spell against a spell you really don't like, or it transmutes for either one of the pieces you need since they both cost 2 mana. We're running 3 Muddle, but it could be right to run 4. The card is that powerful. Another way to filter our cards is Gifts and Given, one of the reasons our deck is built the way it is. We're running two of them, but don't underestimate this card. It allows us to run a crazy package of removal and even reanimation. We can use Gifts to search for pieces of our combo or pieces of anything else we need. Sure, they get to choose which two cards go to the graveyard, but as you'll see soon, sometimes that choice is a lose-lose for them. Until we reveal our dirtily combo, this is a great way to get the combo pieces you need. We're running 1 Detention Sphere, 1 Oblivion Ring, 1 Supreme Verdict, and 1 Rathagon for removal. Each of these cards has its uses, and each of these are easy to fetch up with Gifts and Given. Need a removal spell? Grab a few of these and a few combo pieces. Make your opponent squirm. Gifts is one of the most hilarious cards in the deck for that very reason. Of course, you don't want your opponent making decisions for you, but when every decision is bad, it could be worse. In addition to the nice removal package we have, we're also running something super cheeky, on Burial Rites and Elishnorn, both as one-ofs. This is another route to inevitability. The Rites can cast from the yard, which is super brutal, and Elishnorn essentially ends any game against a creature-based strategy. Why include this? Give some given. This is where that card really shines. Remember, you don't have to pick four cards for them to choose from. Just pick the Rites and Elishnorn, both go to the yard automatically, and wham, you have your reanimation next turn so dirty. Even if it doesn't survive a turn, the minus two minus two on entry to the battlefield is usually enough to put a game away. If you have to hard cast this, you can do that too. You are running an attrition style strategy. Enjoy your hilarious gifts and given shenanigans. 
We're also running two Talisman of Progress. On the off chance you have a sword in the graveyard and your foundry on the battlefield, you need another artifact to sacrifice to get the combo working. The Talisman gives you some early mana fixing and mana ramp in addition to nice sacrifice fodder to your combo to get it working. Gifts oftentimes sends a combo piece to the yard, so you should expect that. Talisman's a hard worker. Speaking of hard workers, Engineered Explosives is our last one of. Straight up removal, the card's real good. Nukes Affinity real well, takes down a lot of zoo variants, some infect board states. You aren't going to sunburst for more than three at any time, but you won't need it for that much anyways. This card's all about getting you more time to assemble your combo, wonderful one of. The last card in the main deck is Thirst for Knowledge, a full playset. This is one of the best rewards you could ask for for playing an artifact based blue deck. 3 mana, instant speed, 3 cards. You get to discard an extra combo piece, maybe a talisman, pretty much whatever you want. This is the kind of card draw you want, incredibly effective and one of the better cards in the deck for sure. Again, great reward for playing artifacts in blue. The land base is actually pretty sweet, way more interesting than normal. Now you could run this deck as purely a blue-white deck, but we really like time sieve and sunbursting the explosive, so there's some black goodness in here. We're running 4 Flooded Strand, 3 Hollowed Fountain, 2 Sunken Ruins, and 3 Watery Grave for your classic fetches and duels. For additional fixing, 2 Sea Chrome Coast, 2 Attack with Late Game, 3 Celestial Colonnade, to mess with lands, 2 Ghost Quarter, and my two favorite lands in the deck, get ready for this, 2 Academy Ruins and 1 Talaria West. Academy Ruins is a savior in the deck. The card brings back everything you want to bring back in case it goes away forever. You get your explosives back, your sieve, sword, talisman, combo pieces, anything you want. It's a genius card. Great with gifts ungiven as our opponent will likely send our combo pieces to the bin. Academy Ruins, all the value. Talaria West is here specifically because of its 100% awesome interaction with Engineered Explosives and Academy Ruins. Transmute is a wonderful thing. Playing Talaria West is like having two explosives or ruins. It feels good, really good. It's what this deck does. It answers all the questions. You can't tell me you aren't in love, right? Anyways, add in a single island and you have the 23 land mana base. The best way to explain what's going on here is to compare it to a control deck with a combo attached. Almost like Splinter Twin, but obviously not as crazy. For example, the deck is a control shell. It functions very much like a control deck does. You keep things away early, try to survive, and then assemble your combo and push your opponent out. While it isn't as explosive as some other combo decks, and it doesn't go infinite right away, it does create a sense of inevitability. If a player knows what Thopter plus Sword does, there's a decent chance they just scoot to a game one. Once you're creating 1-1 one, one Thopters and gaining one life each time you do it, it's real hard to come back from it from almost any strategy. Your dream is obviously turn 2 Sword, turn 3 Foundry, create a 1-1, one, one, but that isn't going to happen all the time. Be patient. Play reactively early if you have to. If you don't have to react, do whatever you can to assemble your combo faster. That's what your card filtering is there for. Use it. Modern is changing a lot right now, so the sideboard is going to be a bit tricky to figure out. One thing you do know is that everyone and their parents are going to bring in Stony Silence against you. Disenchant is great, but also you can turn your deck into a late game bomb deck and play more Elishnorn out of the board. Really mess with the crap load of artifact hate they're going to bring in by relying less on artifacts. Just a thought, that's my plan though. Gutshot is amazing against any deck with Birds of Paradise, Affinity, in fact, all that jazz. Timely reinforcements against Burn, Mono Red, Zoo. Be careful not to play too much Artifact Hate against Affinity because it does hurt you as well. If you can get your combo online, you can usually outpace them, but be careful when sideboarding against it. You pseudo sideboard against yourself too. Against other control decks, Negate is fine, Dispel is great, usual stuff. This deck may seem complicated on paper, but I promise once you've played and get the hang of it, you're really going to love what you're doing. Sword of the Meek is one of the most hilarious cards in Modern now, and you really owe it to yourself as a player to try it out. Nothing feels as good as getting your combo off against an aggro deck or burn deck. Really, nothing feels better. If you have any questions, leave them below. There are a bunch of different lists going around, so I'll try to answer your questions about the card choices I made. In a meta that isn't full of Tron, this deck is super good. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. It isn't a secret that prices are going crazy right now. You know what prices aren't going crazy? Shocklands. Watery Grave is sitting at a sweet $11. Seems super cheap for one of the best lands in Modern. Don't want the Dimir version? How about the Azorius Master Race? Seven bucks. Yeah. 
$7 for a hollowed fountain. If that isn't a deal, I don't know what is. Enjoy the cheapness.